Gibson EMC president and CEO says it's the worst ice storm damage he's seen in his 22 years. Roadmaker described the damage in Lake and Obion counties as catastrophic. In the midst of a winter freeze falling on the face of a small Tennessee town, a seed takes root beneath the consciousness of this community. I don't know of any projects like it in, in rural America. It's going to become a world famous attraction. A man born and raised here decides that even if he can't move heaven, he can certainly move earth, so hopes and ideas will have room to grow. The focus is number one on education, number two on entertainment, and number three and far down the line tourism. The harvest won't be easy. Some will scoff that the concept is planted in the wrong place. I, well, I think my first thoughts were like a lot of people that was, ah, this can't be true, you know. No, nobody could possibly be thinking of building something as it was described to me here in a rural area like this. But patience and persistence can prove to be powerful fertilizer for a dream. And this community is a wonderful place to live. It's a wonderful place to visit. It's even going to be more wonderful once Discover Park gets open. Jenny and I, my wife, set up this Robert E. and Jenny D. Kirkland Foundation several years ago. And we can't solve hunger in Africa and uh, eradicate AIDS or anything like that. So you start looking and you start saying, well, you know, I can't make a big difference around the world. but maybe I can make a big change in my own backyard. And so we decided to focus whatever monies that our foundation gave away uh, on this area, Union City, Tennessee, and Obion County. Looking out over the backyard of his community, Robert Kirkland sees that early learning is a big benefit for preschool children. So he makes sure they all have books to read and he funds a daycare scholarship program for at-risk kids. Looking further, he sees teenagers who seldom travel outside the county. So he finances trips to Europe for some of the high school students and even pays the way for many of them to go to college. To send 10 students to Europe is just crazy to think about that someone would be so generous to do that. Um, I just think it's awesome. I mean, I don't think there's another community like it in the world because we subsidize the public education system here from birth on through uh, scholarships privately, on through scholarships to uh, the college of your choice. He feels like, you know, educated public is a whole lot better than uneducated public. Kind of a thing to him, let's see if I, we can educate everybody where we are and see if that helps. The one thing that we don't have is something to pique the imagination of a young student, and that's the first focus of Discovery Park. But the big picture for Discovery Park of America isn't completely clear. So Robert Kirkland calls on his longtime friend, Jim Rippey, to help bring the idea for an educational entertainment center into focus. We're in the same class together. We played football together, played basketball together. We both enrolled at UT Knoxville, same time. He's always been the leader of the group through high school, through everything we've done, he, you know, he's prayed of paternity. He's had that leadership ability. And I've always had respect for his organizational ability and always had respect for his morals. And he's just done a great job at everything he's attempted when he's had control and the ability to, to organize it. And uh, I just wish that I had the, the management ability that he had. As a successful entrepreneur, Robert Kirkland co-founded the well-known Kirkland Gift Stores and developed a lucrative import business here in Union City. He had a greatness about him that uh, I had not seen in anyone else that I had been friends with. There, there was just something really, really special about him and I knew that he would do great things. And now the vision for Discovery Park of America starts coming into view through conceptual drawings from an internationally recognized architect in Canada, Douglas Cardno. His whole terms of reference for me was, uh, I want you to create the most far project you ever did in your life, and I want it to be the highlight of your career. We can save 
hundreds of thousands of dollars over the next 10 years in, in advertising by the free publicity that we're going to get from this outlandish but beautiful sculptured building. Bob is given no, no barriers at all in, in my freedom of expression, except economics, of course. It's a challenge with a capital C. We're taking some materials and doing things with them that in some cases hasn't been done before. Even as construction crews are preparing the site, more than 250 community volunteers are creatively conceiving attractions. This is something I think is going to excite people from the moment they drive onto the property. And I think our challenge, it is kind of a bigger challenge because you know, a lot of us are coming from rural backgrounds. We may not have seen lots of different sort of wild and crazy things all over the world. It is a challenge for, for us to make, make sure the inside is as exciting as the outside. We were intrigued with the one committee that wanted to have this human figure and have the kids learn about the human body by actually walking in the head and looking through the eyes and experiencing that. I don't think that has ever been done before. I think that's a great idea. Other suggestions quickly sprouted from the committee discussions. Like we're going to have an earthquake simulator. You sit down in a chair and like you're sitting here and the chair starts moving. When you go to the Grand Hall, you're going to be in the area of the dinosaurs. So you, if you have a banquet, you're going to eat with the dinosaurs. Concepts from the committees are developed into a plan of action by a respected exhibit design firm in New York. Everything from holograms of history to virtual voyages through the universe. And it's as if you were really there. So to the greatest extent possible, what it does is really let you travel through space. It's telepresence, uh, using the most current astronomical data possible. Uh, it goes on and on and on about what we can show them, and maybe it'll, uh, it'll tweak some imagination in some child or young adult or to cause them to say, wow, let's, let's pursue that a little bit further. This is a town that has just lost a Goodyear tire plant along with 2,000 jobs. A town where the local mayor also works full-time at a radio station. And this promising new project brings predictions of an economic revival. Well, it's going to mean a great deal to the city, uh, I, I would assume, in, uh, in uh, tourism uh, and certainly putting the city on the map. Uh, whether I, I think there will come a time when when you mention Union City, you'll probably think of Discovery Park. But just as it is getting started, construction comes to a stunning stop. Discovery Park of America and the Douglas Cardinal architectural firm, by mutual agreement, are parting ways. The fault is mine as much as it was for Cardinals. I don't hold any uh, grudges against him. He did the best he could. Uh, he's a creative, very creative man, and I wish him well. Even with construction stalled for months, the search for unique and historic relics remains on schedule. A Stearman PT-17 soars into Union City, on its way to deliver part of the past into the present. The bright blue and yellow aircraft lands as part of the planned military exhibit. Oh, it takes me back to 1943, to when I was in training to become an Air Force pilot. But we're gonna actually hang it in the museum. It's gonna be hanging from the ceiling. Arrival of the historic aircraft coincides with the revelation of new architectural plans for Discovery Park. The latest drawings are from Werner Johnson Museum and Architect Planners of Boston. It's a firm that has designed or planned over 200 museums worldwide. They picked us, I think, because um, we really did understand that there was something special going on here. So we offered them sort of a turnkey. You know, we're going to concept it, we're going to design it, we're going to work hand in hand with the exhibit people, and we're going to build it. And we could control the budget that way extremely well. Combining the plane's appearance with display of the architectural drawings is beyond ironic. And initially it started with uh, thought about uh, flight and maybe wings, but that seemed a little too limited. You know, it really evolved into just these soaring forms. And it seemed to fit right. That sense of, of uplifting the community 
and, and their aspirations and all that. It seemed to fit. And the people here are apparently elated to see Union City rising to a higher level. Twice as many people showed up as were really expected. There was a wonderful uh, mood in the air. People were really excited about it. Hard hats and heavy machinery soon occupy the construction site once again. 7,400 cubic yards of concrete and 2,000 tons of steel are about to rise up from the countryside. Momentum is building and shapes are evolving, but there's something missing. I'm not excited. <laughs> it's, it's, it's hard to stay excited from 2007. I'm told that we're just a little bit behind. I, I disagree, frankly, with them. I think we're four to six months behind. It's just been so long. I never, I never imagined it would be so long. And I never imagined that it would need me to be so involved. We're amateurs at building uh, Discovery Parks. We haven't done this before. I've failed at 100% of all the new projects I've tried in my life the first time I tried them. And that's no joke. I, I, I've never succeeded at anything on the first try. So I thought this one, with all my experience and age, and that I wouldn't go through that again, but I did. So uh, with that being, being said, I am um, five, six, seven years older than I was. I hope I can uh, be a part of this when it's finished and open. Several weeks in the hospital with a severe abdominal infection didn't elevate Kirkland's level of enthusiasm. He kept saying, I'm not going to live long enough to see it. I, I want to see it finished. Now, his health is better now, and he's going to get to see it finished. Of course, there were times when I wondered that maybe we wouldn't get here. It just took so long, and the energy level subsides after a couple of years when you say you're not much further along than you were before. But now it's exciting with the roof line going up. I think it's fantastic. I really do. I'm just blown away every time I come out and see some new progress. Just unreal. There's a lady here in town who had seen the rendering of the, the first one. She's very outspoken. And I asked her, what do you think? She said, it's the ugliest building I've ever seen. So I, I thought, well, we're on the right track. Well, when we parted with Cardinal and we got a new design, here and I showed her and I said, what do you think? She said, second ugliest building I've ever seen. <laughs> With construction back at full tilt, talk about town returns to other matters. No longer do people wonder if Discovery Park will get built, but even with Interstate 69 planned to pass just a few yards away, some have doubts of how many people will actually come out to the middle of nowhere to see it. This is on a scale that would sit comfortably in any major metropolis. To have this in a town of what, about 11 and a half thousand people, that's pretty unique. On the one hand, you can say, wow, that's pretty impressive and a little risky. And on the other hand, you can say, well, that hats off for trying it, because if it succeeds moderately, it will still knock people's socks off. And if it succeeds fully, um, it'll be you know, something really spectacular. Discovery Center, with its curving architecture and tall tower, encompasses 100,000 square feet of room for exhibits. It sits in the heart of a 50-acre plot of property. Constantly evolving concepts are now sown in every space, with 29 new buildings planted in what was once a Northwest Tennessee cornfield. To uh, talk about the history of religion, we have not an old chapel that uh, was given to us. We we're very thankful for it. And we have a, a pioneer village, which is uh, to teach people how the families lived in the 1800s. We are, in part, what we were. And to know that our uh, fathers and forefathers came to this area of the country with nothing but an ax and a mule and maybe a cow and made them a little hut and then started chopping trees down and made themselves a house, harvested their corn on the cob and put it up in these barns where it dried and they took it out 
fed it to their cattle and their hogs. To know that this is part of us, a part of our DNA, this is, is important. And uh, it gave uh, us in this area a, a, a work ethic that we all still have. This is going to be a unique place, and when it's all said and done, I've got to come back and see it myself. Thank you for your help. We're on what we call Mill Hill. We rebuilt this grist mill right here on the side of this hill. This building is an uh, exhibit in itself. It was built by two men by hand. There are no nails in the part of the building, which is uh, the post and beam construction. They used all notches and wooden pegs to make it good. So it took three years, a volunteer, three years to build it. And it was a team of volunteers who tracked down the majority of these exhibits, including the steam locomotive and train cars. No, Mr. Kirkland called me his junkyard dog. <laughs> uh, I've been able to find stuff for him. I've been able to dicker price from different people and get the price down a little bit for him and save him a little bit of money. So. He refers to me as the junkyard dog. Best part of this project has been the volunteer help that has uh, come to spend hours and hours and hundreds and thousands of hours working for Discovery Park. One of those volunteers is finally going on the payroll as chief executive officer after 34 years in the insurance business. Today, uh, well, they're working on the towers you can see behind me. Jim Rippey takes on the challenging chore of keeping the project on schedule for a November 1st grand opening. On the second day of spring, he supervises installation of a long-awaited exhibit in Discovery Center. We call him a giant human. He's about 55, 60 feet tall. He's made out of steel uh, rods, and it has, he holds a globe up in front of him, and kids can crawl through an arm into the globe and stand up and look down among the dinosaurs, or there's a slide from the backside that they could slide down. Even with the new CEO on the job, Robert Kirkland isn't about to disappear. You know how many people that are, we have working out here? About half of them. <laughs> and he hasn't lost his sense of humor, but with deadlines looming as workers try to have Discovery Park ready for opening, changes are still being made. He called me up sometimes two or three times a day and say, Let's, what, what do you think about this? Are you gonna do this? And this, which drives the contractors here crazy. He's right, I do drive them crazy. Because he changes something. Let's change that. I do, I change things all the time. Let's put up 10 flags out front. Well, that just came out of the clear blue, but that wasn't in the plan. Liberty Hall just came out of the blue. It was, it was never in the plan. Uh, well, we're in Liberty Hall, which is located in Freedom Square in Discovery Park or he'll say, let's get a statue of Abraham Lincoln. And we got one. That, that wasn't in the plan. We got a statue of David Crockett. That wasn't in the plan. I'd rather change things and change my mind constantly and have it end up right than to say, this is the way we're going to do it and stick with that and it'd be wrong. If he wasn't like that, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be half what it is. It, it would not even be close to what this is. He's not only got, put his ideas, he's put his money to make it work. And it has grown four times what it was in the beginning, maybe five. You know, he's, he sees what it's gonna be. And now he wants it perfect. Perfect or not, the public will be the judge. And ready or not, it is opening day. People are arriving early, turning in from a four lane thoroughfare recently improved and expanded by the city. It has been five years, 115 days, and more than 600,000 construction crew hours since the groundbreaking in 2008. Sunlight reflects on a flowing fountain out front for a story making a big splash in Union City history. The economic effect on this community will be tremendous, but most of all, this is just something that's gonna make us all feel really good. Well, I hope this is just the beginning of a 50 or 100 year journey of educating people, not only in Obine County and Union City, Tennessee, but in all the world. And as you go through this today, I hope you'll have the best time that you've ever had with all your clothes on. <laughs> and the people who laugh at his jokes also appreciate the sincerity of this moment. You know, we all have dreams. 
Some come to pass and some just stay dreams forever. Most dreams are for ourselves and for our families, not the whole world. So I would like to thank you, Mr. and Ms. Kirkland, for taking this dream of yours and sharing it with us and putting it right here in Union City. So without any further delay, Mr. and Ms. Kirkland, let's open up this park. You're welcome to come on in. Several hundred visitors moved through the front door and set out across the vast venue. Discovery Park of America is everything promised, plus many things unexpected. I knew it was going to be pretty interesting and fascinating, but I just didn't realize the scope of this place until I came and, and looked around. I mean, every corner that I turn around, I'm seeing something that's just unbelievable and, and unbelievably rare. Like I just saw an Enigma machine over there, and I know that not very many of those survived World War II because they were destroyed. The name says it all. It's Discovery Park of America. This is one of the best American destination attractions I've ever seen. When we drove up today, the building itself is worth coming and driving out to see. There are 10 different galleries where guests find educational entertainment. Even the exposed mechanisms within the escalator offer an opportunity for learning. Yay! <laughs> Children are invited not only to see, but also to experience the exhibits. This is awesome, it's fun for everybody. I don't care how old you are, or how young you are, this is fun. And everybody is invited to explore the giant man from top to bottom. I work full time for the Smithsonian in Washington. It's the diversity of the place, the potential of the place that are very exciting. I mean, I'm th just thrilled to be here. The anxiously anticipated earthquake simulator not only shakes up the audience, but shares the story of how nearby Realfoot Lake was created. And some former residents of Realfoot are staring back at spectators from inside a 20,000 gallon aquarium. Every turn that you make around this place here in Union City is something else that is past, present, and also into the future that is going to open the eyes of young people around here to give them a determination to reach farther than maybe they would have if they were never exposed to it. Flames flare from a hologram to tell tales of Native American Indians in the region. It's so extensive. It's so in-depth, uh, the arrowheads in there, that really caught my eye. There's so many. There's got to be over two or 3,000 in there. I'm a huge history lover anyway, and the period from the Native Americans up through the Civil War and World War I and World War II to me was particular. That's where I wanted to sl slow down and spend a little bit more time. The military gallery includes replicas of the two atomic bombs dropped on Japan in World War II. And guests are invited to climb up in the cockpit of an Army helicopter that once flew missions in the Vietnam War. I never fathomed how big that helicopter was, and I got to get in it and everything. I was going, man, this is neat. But I'm really fascinated by all this World War II stuff right here, and some of these cars down here. I, one of those cars is my dream car, it's a Shelby Cobra, 1965. I've never got to see one uh, in person, and I got to see one today. It was amazing. One of our challenges has been to create, uh, you know, job demand and job growth in our more rural areas, and, and here. Uh, that's probably been more true because we've suffered several economic losses. Uh, and I think this is, this is actually a very significant tourist attraction that's, that's legitimate. This is worth your time to drive five, six hours, whatever, to come here. The wonderful weather makes for a great day of walking through history out on the grounds. Asian and European gardens provide pleasant surroundings for the old church. Liberty Square with its barbershop and fire station. The old passenger train and the pioneer settlement where volunteer reenactors demonstrate the culture of their ancestors. One of the most famous people to ever live in this region, Davy Crockett, drops by to meet the new neighbors. You know, we, we live in a country now that really is clueless overall about where we came from and, and why we're here today. And so when you can relate the past and connect it with the present and get people to understand there's a real important connection in understanding who we are and you still you see that expression in their faces light up to understand that history is relevant. Anyone with a ticket is welcome to explore Discovery Park of America but this entire educational environment becomes a classroom for children on field trips. Every class can come to Discovery Park of America every year and they don't get repeat experiences. 
they get a different lesson and a different experience each year. So that's good for us and good for the teachers. So everybody's excited about that. It's actually a very ambitious program, but it's what the teachers want, it's what administrators want, and it's how we chose to serve them. And now the founders of Discovery Park of America are hoping their work will inspire others to think about building something bigger in their own backyards. Just because they don't know how to do it doesn't mean they can't do it. We didn't know how to do this, we still don't. You know, we've made mistakes. He'll admit we make mistakes, uh, but we know the ones not to make. You know, we'd be glad to help other people get going, and if they need information, we're free to give any information to anybody. The great experiment of Discovery Park of America is far from having measurable results. The vision is now the venue, and the dreams are now the opportunities. But where it all will lead remains a matter of speculation and hope that the seeds planted here will reap a successful harvest. The return on investment, if we could measure it, won't occur until 10, 15, 20 years down the road when some school student who they come out here and all of a sudden they see something that really excites them and then they come out as a Nobel Prize winner because they took a look at some dinosaur in here or they took a look in space and technology and it piqued their curiosity. No one here ever saw something so huge come in. And so I just think, you know, if something can happen to such a small town, something as huge as Discovery Park, you know, I can do something. Maybe not on the scale of Discovery Park, but I can do something great.